So we have Psalms 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. Interesting. The breath of his mouth created the heavens, all their hosts, and all that is. Because Job 33, 4 goes on to say, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. So here we have pictured that when you breathe, what's coming out? Right? When you speak, even, you have microparticles of moisture, moisture coming out of your your body. Part of that's, right. that's uh like from your saliva that's made up of the waters that incom that comprises your makeup, your physical anatomy. Yep, you could not breathe or speak without moisture water coming out of you. So does this mean God must have a body then? God must have a real mouth, a real set of lungs. He, he we were right. made in his image. That's right. His, oh yeah. His breath comes out of himself to go create. It does. Mix it mix it with the frequency of the sound and boom, there you got you know, you got uh, physics which creates matter and shape. It does. That's yeah. interesting, right? And so it's it must be from his own what do we call that? Essence or how about just substance? Right. It's from the, it's from the moist mouth of your maker. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of the the substance of God, let's look at what one of the early church figures from the second century. Many of you have heard from us before that we think Irenaeus has a little more weight and authority than some of the later so-called church figures, because Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp, who was a martyr and disciple of direct disciple of John the Apostle who, as we know, was the apostle of Yeshua, interacting with him personally. And so what are we talking? Second generation disciple of Yeshua here with Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyons yeah. from France. Approximately 150 AD, second century. There you go. So That's we're right. talking like 100 years from Christ walking the earth. Early Christians, they talked about these things. Yeah, they did. Yeah. What did he have to say about it in, against so, heresies? In book four, chapter 20, he says uh, that he, talking about God himself, taking from himself the substance of those things which have been created and the pattern of those things which have been made and the figure of those things in the world which have been adorned. He took from himself the substance. That's right. To create what has been created. Now this okay. is a, and he goes on in chapter nine. Well, earlier in chapter nine, same book, he says, all things therefore are of one and the same substance that is from one and the same God. Now, the reason why you've never heard this before, West Place, huh. is because most of the people who quote Irenaeus uh, quote very very specific small parts of of any of his writings to support Trinitar try to support the trinitarian concept. Why does that matter? Why don't you hear about this stuff more specifically these two passages? Is because most churches have adopted a trinitarian belief, and so their pastors, teachers, evangelists, and and apologist proponents, they are heavily focused on everything that they think supports a trinitarian belief. But these two passages, plus some other stuff he says, destroys Trinitarian belief. Now, in case you're not understanding why uh, the idea of the of the substance is being referenced, you know, it it's about the his argument. This is book four in books one, two, and three, and four. He's still addressing the heresies of different versions of Gnosticism and Marcionism and all these other um, heresies that he was addressing in the late first, early second century, coming out of Alexandria, Egypt, as well as coming out of Rome. The different places where they were trying to infuse Greek philosophy, which is obsessed with talking about the essence of God. And so therefore, here is Irenaeus. Instead of him, he's refuting Gnosticism and how they used Platonic philosophical framework talking about a substance, which is the essence of the creator and how it cannot be indivisible. It has must be comprised of itself um, and, and anything that comes from it is also it. So this is why you'll hear Trinitarians speak in the language that, oh, Jesus came from his father, therefore he is God also, because they're using the word God with a philosophical presupposition definition, meaning... A special essence, yeah. Yeah, the way they define the substance, according to their Trinitarian Neoplatonic framework of philosophy, is not like the substance that just comes out of you if you speak, right? The water vapor that comes out of you speak. It's a special categorization of philosophy of which they say anything that comes from G.O.D., the ultimate creator, must also be a part of that same substance. This is where they get the whole three persons with one shared being. Mm -hmm. They also teach that everything outside of what they believe is the, the three persons and one shared being 
Everything outside of that is a different substance that was created out of nothing. Including the, the angels, the hosts of heaven. All of, all of creation you see, including the angels. So they claim that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the same philosophical consubstantiation, the same substance that's unique and special that no one else shares in, and that everything else that you see, angels, humans, all things, were created of a different substance. So yeah. that is the philosophic framework. But against heresies, Irenaeus is saying, all things come from him who made it from himself, and they're all of one and the same substance. This kind of stuff completely refutes and destroys the dominant Trinitarian presupposition based off of their philosophical leanings. Yes. So as a result of this, they don't quote these passages. That's why you've hardly ever heard these passages before. Exactly. Yep. That's the three legs of the, the Trinitarian doctrine. We do believe there is a father. He begot a son. And we do believe there is the spirit of the father, the Holy Spirit. But if you were to say that they are co-equal in authority, we know Yeshua serves and worships his father as high priest in heaven, ministering to his God, who is greater in authority to him. So that's out of the window. There's no co-equal authority. There's no co-substantial essence, as, as Sean just described. But how about th this concept of uh, of creation ex nihilo? Is that how they say it? Ex, Chris, ex nihilo. Out of it, ex nihilo. Yeah, out of out, out of, of nothing. nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that that would be opposed to the idea of God creating it from His own substance? Right? Exactly. That's why I jokingly, yeah. in some debates and interviews, I jokingly call it the Christian version of the Big Bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because it's th they they think it's modern Trinitarian scholars yeah. will get extremely triggered. They think it's heresy for what Irenaeus is saying on screen here. They think that it would be that in their understanding, because again, they're using their presupposition as a definition. So mm -hmm. they would think that if everything was brought out from the substance of God himself, then everything must be God. Mm. So then they, you know, and then some people even uh, misuse the term pantheism and try to say, Oh, we well, are just describing pantheism, but that's not true either because pantheism believes there is no actual God but just all things are a part of God. But that's not what scripture, and that's not what Irenaeus is saying either. He's just saying simply, where did he get the matter from? Um, and so Irenaeus is trying to explain this common sense physics to you. Everything you see came literally from him speaking out of the substance he pulled from within himself to create all matter and all substances that you see. It doesn't mean, it doesn't follow that this Greek platonic definition of substance, meaning that therefore everything that, came out of him is also God. That's not, that's not, that's the no. logic of Greek philosophy. That's not the logic of scripture. Picked up, yeah. right. They pick it up from new age thought where they try to pray to the universe and act like universe is God and this kind of stuff. But that's not what we're saying. We're saying creation sub subservient to the father, the almighty God. And it came from his, the substance of his, his breath and his mouth, right. and his word. That's right. Yep. He created that's right. That's how he can hold all things together. Guys, yeah. that's, that's right. how he Here's literally where... knows at all times what's going on in his creation. He does, and we'll look at more of how that's possible as well.